Hi, and welcome back. It's episode 23 of Culture Watch Radio. I'm Andrew Smith, and with me is Bill Muhlenberg. Bill, it's been a while since we've done Culture Watch Radio. It has. <laughs> I think quite a few years, actually. Uh, by my reckoning, uh, we've seen a few things come and go. I think we've had uh, an American president come and go in this time, uh, Donald Trump. Uh, I think we've had a new prime minister in Australia, a miracle man, Scott Morrison, getting in in 2019. Uh, a few other bits and pieces have happened. Uh, what? I think we've had a little virus that's uh, swept the world as well. So, yeah, a few things since we've last chatted. Ah, oh, just, a, just a flesh wound. Yeah. Yes. And, and uh, a little gay marriage thing. Hmm. Yes, that's certainly gone through. Uh, that was being fought, and we would have done quite a few interviews about it uh, back in our earlier uh, discussions. But yeah, that's gone through, and uh, which uh, many of us had uh, concerns about. Yeah. So were the gay marriage crowd content with their win, or do they now want more? Yes, well, that's exactly what we, so many of us did warn about. We said, look, this is not the end by any means. This is just one part of the overall agenda that they're pushing. Many, in fact, didn't even really want marriage. It was much more of a symbolic thing they were pushing as part of the special rights package they've been demanding. So we said back then, if, if marriage goes through, it won't be the end. It won't be everything will be sweetness and light. Uh, what we said, in fact, would be everything will change. Uh, everything will be up for grabs. And that certainly happened, not just with the various new homosexual agenda items, but I think since we've last talked, uh, while the trans uh, revolution was going on five years ago. It certainly heated up big time in the last five years. And now this is the whole new uh, front that we can talk about where the next set of battles are taking place. New outrages in terms of attacks on freedom, attacks on religion, attacks on, well, biology and reality have been taking place because of the trans agenda. So, yeah, that's really been the, the one of the newest and most uh, worrying fronts on this whole sexual revolution. So, Bill, how much of this has been fed by well-meaning people going, oh, OK, and apologising for what shouldn't be apologised for? Oh, look, there's been always a mix. There's been some, I would say, clueless and somewhat naive people who mean well and think, you know, all these things, whether homosexual marriage, the whole trans thing, including making sure you got the right pronouns and letting kids as young as three or four go in for a surgery to change their so-called uh, sexuality or gender. Uh, many people think this is the kind and compassionate and, uh, you know, it's, it's the thing you do. You want to be tolerant. You want to respect people. And if that's their choice, that's fine. Uh, as I say, I think they've been rather clueless and naive because there's real negative impacts for all this. But then, of course, there are the actual activists, the militants. They know full well what they're doing. They know exactly what they're aiming for. They know the things they're really trying to gun down and certainly traditional morality, uh, certainly uh, traditional religion, traditional values have all been in the sights of the activists. So a war against marriage and family has long been part of this activism. So we can separate those who mean well but are not helping things by supporting these radicals. And then we have the militants themselves who are certainly working to a script, certainly going to a plan. And sadly, they've been making a real headway in their uh, radical sexual agenda. Just how far in advance have they been planning what they've done? Well, that's a good question. And some of us who've been following this, well, we've been, I've been following it here in Australia for over 30 years now. Uh, in fact, early on, I used to religiously read the homosexual press, right? They used to have, uh, well, probably still do, uh, plenty of free homosexual newspapers you could pick up at libraries, at coffee shops, cafes. 
So I routinely would pick up these uh, papers and see, okay, what, what's, you know, what's their plan? What's their goal? What are they aiming for? You know, most people didn't have a clue, but I was following 20, 25 years ago uh, what they were saying. In fact, I've got books as well written by the activists, both from here and overseas. And they told us then, 25, 30 years ago, this is what we should do. This is how we're going to win. This is the strategy we should follow. And yeah, it seems to be going to a T. It's all following nicely according to plan. And uh, so I remember earlier on warning even fellow um, pro-family types saying, hey, this is coming, including homosexual marriage, I often would actually get laughed at. People would say, oh, come on, you're, you're, you're being an alarmist, Bill. This will never happen. Of course, now we can only look back and say, well, we told you so. Uh, it has happened, and uh, things have gotten a whole lot worse in the meantime. That's the thing. I mean, a lot of people don't, they don't plan their social life beyond two weeks. They don't really think very far ahead in time, and and they don't even know what to do if a watchman should warn them about something far off in the, in the distance. But when a fight comes, they wish they'd had more time. Yeah, well, but then it's too late, isn't it? Uh, you know, the idea of a watchman on the wall sending the alert, sending the alarm is to um, warn people ahead of time. It's a whole lot easier to prepare stuff in advance and say, all right, this is going to come if we don't take steps X, Y, Z. Uh, once uh, something's gone through, as for example, homosexual marriage, very hard to undo something like that. Once a law is passed, very difficult to change it. So yeah, my role amongst others, other people as well, have been trying to sound the alarm, trying to warn people. But sadly, uh, yeah, a lot of people didn't listen. And now some are starting to wake up. But now you're almost saying, well, it's, it's getting very late in the day. So many things have already happened. Uh, you know, the fight is now that much more difficult. Yeah. And some of the ancient wisdom from Art of War is that mm -hmm. wars are won and lost before the fighting begins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, absolutely. And uh, again, some of us were uh, a little bit cluey as to what was happening. We tried to sound the alarm, but so many, including those who should know better, you know, as the old line, oh, you're being a melodramatic, Bill, you're being an alarmist, you're panic-mongering, you're fear-mongering, this won't happen, or if it does, it won't be as bad as you say. So, yeah, well, look, if, you, if you're a, a, a Christian and you're familiar with the Bible, the, the prophets in the Old Testament really had the same situation. Jeremiah was actually told by God, hey, the people won't listen. God told him in advance that, uh, you know, uh, they're not going to listen, but nonetheless, I want you to sound the alarm anyway. So I think Jeremiah spent something like 40 years telling and warning the Israelites about coming judgment and so on. So there, even uh, he had this uh, thankless task, knowing that for the most part, people would not listen. Uh, but look, you got to do what you got to do. If you're called to sound the alarm, set the alert, well, then you do it and leave the results up to God. Yeah, it, it's amazing how you, you know, there's this need to save people mm. in spite of themselves. Yeah, 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 yeah. well, that's it, yeah. And, uh, well, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, sometimes people do wake up, do listen, uh, others don't. I mean, the whole trans thing, like like we said, five, ten years ago, we were warning these would be the next steps. In fact, I wrote articles five, ten, fifteen years ago saying the whole trans agenda would be coming up. It would be a real problem. And of course, now we're seeing people suffering as a result, losing their jobs, being fired, being fined for, you know, mis- uh, gendering somebody, saying the wrong pronoun. So everything we kind of warned about, well, it's now happening. So, Bill, no pressure. What can we do? <laughs> well, that's always the million-dollar question, and I get asked that all the time. So I always say a two-part question. One, there's the long-term big-picture thing that we have to do, and that won't solve problems overnight. And then there's the more immediate things we can do. As far as the long term, well, the other side has uh, decided to infiltrate, if you will, the institutions of power and influence, the media, law, 
politics, the judiciary, even the churches. So they've got in. They've been doing this for 50 years now. And, uh, well, so for us, the long-term thing is to reclaim some of these institutions. We need people on our side getting into law, getting into the media, getting into medicine. So that's the big picture, and that's probably where it's, the real battle is going to take place. In terms of the short-term things, well, then we pick the little particular battles there exist. Uh, we have to, you know, on the trans thing, for example, we have to alert people. You uh, may well lose your job if you simply affirm that there are two sexes, not 500. You will probably lose your job if you affirm that men and women are different. You may well get fired if you say only women can have babies. So that's the kind of the more shorter term people who are in the various professions who are dealing with this. At least I can warn them and say you're going to have to be very careful more and more laws are being passed about this very thing. So you may need to consider, do I you know, look at another job or do I stand strong here, face the consequences? So yeah, in a sense, there's a million things we can do, partly depending on where we're at at the moment. Yes. Oh, sounds like enough fun for everyone, really. Yes, yes. Uh, as always, more information is available at Culture Watch. And we'll see you again next week with another episode of Culture Watch Radio.